right into the subject surrounding the revisions of the ending scene of Snow White 2024. Now, we talked about this a couple of days ago that there are a lot of things shifting around when it comes to re-editing this movie, including the flow slash the pace of the film, uh, some of the dialogue being swapped out, some of the songs being cut out. They want to reduce the running time. They also want to rearrange some of the scenes to kind of create a different pattern for this film. This is all due in part, by the way, as a reaction to the negative test screenings because it's been not really getting the greatest reception as of yet by screeners. Now, we know one thing about Snow White 24 is that it does not honor the 1937 original in the least. In fact, it alienates it, and it really seems like it's something that it's on its own movie that should not even be called Snow White. Now, with Snow White 24 going through much damage control to this very day by Disney, one major development has to do with the Snow White ending scene that has been going under serious revisions by Snow White director Mark Webb. Specifically, one of the scenes that were shot back in June of 2022 that went unused is now being put into the new ending of Snow White. As Disney struggles to choose what ending is best fit for the final cut, the current ending now involves Snow White fighting the evil queen with a staff-like weapon, except now that has a magical gem on the end of it that was mined by the seven magical creatures. Here, this time, the evil queen is described to be in her old hag slash witch-like form, still under the spell. However, the staff weapon that Snow White uses and wields reportedly weakens the evil queen and halfway reverts her back to her normal self. It turns out the magical creatures played a role in creating this weapon for Snow White earlier on. Then this leads the evil queen to falling backwards as she begins to slowly melt away, much like the ending of Raiders of the Lost Ark. There is even a scene that was taken from previously shot footage in which the ground begins to crumble, where Snow White eventually is hanging on for her life on the edge, where Jonathan insists that he help her. This is where Zegler's Snow White says that she needs no help and that she can take care of herself. So guys, let me just stop here real quick before I get to the next big piece about this new ending that's currently under a major revision by Disney, is that it goes to show you that this is yet another girl boss moment. She doesn't need any help. She wants nothing to do with Jonathan. Jonathan is nothing more than a doormat in this movie, from what it sounds like. And look, at the end of the day, I think that this falls directly in line with Zegler's view of the prince and calling him a stalker in Snow White 1937. Yes, she literally said that on camera. For those of you that missed it, she did call the prince a stalker in the original Snow White. But when you look at stuff like this, the fact that there's a moment where she's hanging on the edge of what is technically a cliff because the ground begins to crumble and fall apart, and she does not want his help at all. This just goes to show you that Disney doubled down, director Mark Webb doubled down on making her into a very girl bossy character. And this is becoming the new norm in Hollywood, right? They want to keep pushing this nonsense. We've seen this with Indiana Jones 5. We're seeing it with the Marvels. We're seeing it in Star Wars and other franchises that Disney now owns. And it's, all, it's not really going to end for quite a while when it comes to Disney. I know other Hollywood studios are slowly, and I say very slowly, beginning to turn the tide. I think that Universal is getting a better rap right now. But moving on, this is where matters get even worse. Because we know that there are extra scenes that they're throwing into this ending. This reminds me of The Rise of Skywalker, the last Star Wars movie, where Kathleen Kennedy went through like 10 different endings of Star Wars Episode 9. They had no clue what to do with the film, and that's why the ending felt so disjointed. So, moving onwards here, Jonathan, surprisingly, even puts out his hand, and Snow White swats it away as she climbs her up herself and makes it up safely. This is where eventually Snow White and Jonathan make their way back to the cabin of the seven magical creatures and they all begin to cook food and play instruments outside and eventually sing a song around a campfire. This ending scene is still being revised by Disney as frantic re-edits are currently underway as a reaction to the negative test screening for Snow White 2024. Now, I don't know about you guys, but this to me sounds like 
they are trying way too hard to be original. They're trying to cherry pick elements of other franchises out there like Robin Hood, Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, and you know, little tidbits of Snow White 1937. Just little snippets, little glimmers of it thrown into the mix. And the fact that they are going the extra length of really making Zegler's Snow White so bossy over Jonathan and how Jonathan in this film is not going to be like a prince in the traditional sense. And look, at the end of the day, we all have to defend pop culture. We all have to defend what is valued in pop culture for what was valued for multiple decades and how Disney is trying to strip that down one by one and not only that, but it's also influencing some other studios out there to do similar things. Some studios are just as naive as Disney. I mean, that's just the sad truth of it all, but it's true. There's other production studios out there that's beginning to make great content out there. I think one great example uh, that really doesn't get the recognition that it deserves fully is that One Piece live action remake or live action iteration that really I feel is a great message to how you can make something valuable. Another, another great example is Cobra Kai. Great, great example there. I think we need more things like that except in the movies. And that's, you know, when you can begin to turn the tide. So anyway, this is where matters get even worse is the fact that they did cut out this horse scene. We talked about this. This is no longer a part of the final cut. There was a scene where Snow White was going to be leading the horse, where Jonathan would be sitting in the back. A reversed uh, situation from the original 1937 ending, where the prince is leading the way. This time, Snow White is leading the way to the castle, and Jonathan is basically just along for the ride, right? Quite literally. So. When you look at Snow White 2024, between the seven magical creatures helping create a weapon that weakens the old hag and reverts her spell halfway through, I can only imagine what that looks like. We just talked about this before, how it mimics the scene of Raiders of the Lost Ark where everyone melts. It's much like that. But anyway, guys, you know, drop a comment below. Fill me in below in the comments what you all have to say about this. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. And I will catch you guys later.